Hi, everybody. Welcome to this presentation on sensory motor psychotherapy. I'm Pat Ogden. I'm the founder of uh, Sensory Motor Psychotherapy Institute and the creator of Sensory Motor Psychotherapy. And I'm excited to share my work with you today. And I want to give you a little bit of my own background um, about how I got into this work with the body. In the early 1970s, I was teaching yoga and dance uh, in a psychiatric hospital. And, and what I discovered was that the patients who did those two classes seemed to get better. And that really piqued my interest in uh, the value of, of the movement and posture of the body in mental health. So I started really thinking about what was important in trauma treatment um, and came to the realization that helping my clients kind of stay in their bodies and sense their bodies was the most important. So these, these are my early experiences that really contributed to the development of sensory motor psychotherapy. It's really in the principles of SP that each person has their own kind of guiding intelligence. And that our job is to help people delve into their experience, whether it's a current you know, experience in a relationship or something like that, or something that's come up from years ago, to delve into that experience, explore it, understand how it impacts them, impacts their beliefs, their emotions, their spiritual life, their body language, their relational capacities, and really help them get to the point where they can say, oh, this is all working for me in this areas. And then there's a part of me that it's not working for, you know, like in my primary relationship or perhaps with my daughter or my son or with a colleague at work or with my clients. So to really start to see how the, the organization of their whole experience is kind of coordinating a particular kind of response to life. And in many cases, cases by really self-exploration through mindfulness and getting information about the impacts of these kinds of beliefs and experiences in the body and emotions and so forth that a person is able to see in their own experience. Here's what's working for me and here's how I'd like to change. One of the things I love most about sensory motor that I see as, as one of its defining characteristics um, is that there is a place for beauty, joy, and pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. As a way to open us up to more of our, more of the depths of our emotional experience, right? Beauty is often a pathway into suffering, just mm -hmm. truthfully. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so to work, to expand or deepen uh, or identify those resources that bring our clients, um, bring ourselves, you know, because again, I think now is a really great time for all uh, therapists to be thinking about getting real with the self-care and the collective okay. care and holding each, us holding each other accountable to that. Right. Um, but when we are working with the client uh, to connect them to sources of joy or beauty or pleasure mm -hmm. um, or spirituality, uh, mm -hmm. we are doing trauma work. And that's one of the things that I've always thought is, is, is a real distinction in how sensory motor, you know, uh, approaches trauma work. Hi, this is Kate Cooney, Minton, Rochelle Lorazby, and Jennifer Gardner. And we're going to give you a basic course orientation. I'm going to tell you a little bit about why we're excited for this new online trauma course. It's a really expanded curriculum that covers a lot of areas that are not included in standard trauma courses. And the goal is to help you expand and develop your knowledge of working somatically with clients who've been impacted by trauma, but also to give you some very practical skills to do that. So that expanded content that Rochelle was speaking about has really been um, maximized for this online format. And we're going to include opportunities for 
um, experiential learning, utilizing breakout groups, utilizing synchronous practice, where you'll be getting feedback on your implementation of the skills in real time. This uh, psychotherapy training uh, is in three modules, and each module has two parts, an A for asynchronous, that's the learning you'll be doing on your own on the computer, and B for B together. So uh, module one is going to be about well-being and basic skills. That would be for eight weeks of asynchronous learning, and then a two-day module together. Module two is about resourcing and regulating ANS activation. That'll be also eight weeks of individual work or asynchronous, and then two-day module together. And then module three includes phases two and three of the phase-oriented treatment, addressing the past, processing traumatic memories, and moving forward, building more skills, adding in relationship, and deeper experience of well-being. Also, we'll be doing some work with case conceptualization in that part. So now we're going to take a couple minutes just to do some questions and answers about the course um, to follow some curiosity that you might have. And I'll start first with um, my question. I'll go to Rochelle. Rochelle, can you speak about how the course is set up? The course is really taking advantage of a lot of the latest research in how to deliver practical learning. And one of the things that we've done is we've taken, uh, we've adopted a, a particular kind of classroom, which is called a flipped classroom. We've taken the core material that you might see as a lecture in the traditional format, and we've put that into online self-directed learning so that you can take your time in reviewing the material. You can review it as many times as you like. And so you can come prepared to those face-to-face -face meetings um, with the material and be ready to put that into practical application. We like to think of it as being self-directed but, but still connected. And there are ways that you'll be meeting together uh, in this online format. So those kinds of opportunities to connect are not lost. In fact, uh, some people find the online format to be uh, very helpful. Hey, Cooney, I have a question for you. How am I going to get the most out of this course? Well, we are still conceptualizing this training as experiential learning. So we really put it together to prepare you for the experiential learning with each other. And the experiential learning we'll do all together in those B modules, being together modules. Um, we're going to try and make opportunities available where you can organize yourself and meet other people that you could work with in your area. All of the, the asynchronous learning is to prepare you for those two days that we're going to be together to practice live. So come prepared to the synchronous modules, the being together modules, to maximize the practice time, to get the skills, you know, when you're practicing in asynchronously when you're with your peer partners, really learn the skills that we're going to be practicing together when we come for the two-day modules. And we think you'll get the most out of those live experiential modules by doing it that way. After finishing the level one training, probably I would say the biggest thing that I learned was about how to regulate uh, client states of arousal um, so that they stay within the window of tolerance. And a really, really important thing that I learned is that you've got to choose the right intervention depending on whether someone's hyper aroused or whether they're hypo aroused. Um, and if you choose the wrong intervention, it'll actually keep them in that state instead of bringing them back to, to you know, a level that's you know, tolerable for them. I think from the moment they come in, so the moment they kind of walk in my door, I'm looking out for you know, how contained are they, are they getting activated, are they getting triggered. Um, I'll even pick up on clients that, you know, they might be running late, for example, and they'll walk in the door and they'll just be frantic and I just slow it all down. So, you know, invite them to come in, have a cuppa, and they're kind of thinking, oh, I'm 10 minutes late, I'm, you know, using up my session, I've got to get into this. Um, and probably in the past I would have done that, I would have grabbed out my assessment form and got straight into it and had a look, okay, what symptoms are they presenting with and all of that sort of stuff. But now I know that you just can't do that because we won't get any of the work done we need to do. I'd absolutely recommend the Level 1 training course to, I think, anyone that is working with clients with trauma. A lot of the training courses are very top-down, so cognitive behaviourally based, 
um, which has its place and it's you know it's fantastic but trauma is very much held in the body so unless you have strategies to resolve what's happening in the body and in the nervous system then that arousal just kind of keeps on going and it doesn't really ever resolve itself. Well, I hope that, that students will walk away with a real embodied sense of, of that idea of, of inner intelligence for themselves and their clients. Um, and also, I hope that they will walk away with a, a new kind of relationship to embodiment. Uh, and kind of an honoring and valuing of, of the body. And see, because once they, they really get that, then all the techniques and everything will just come out of that, that kind of context. <laughs>